All right. Um, we expecting guests? <laughs> no. Nope. Right. Hey. All right. Some furniture here. Stay there. I'm trying to see if you can catch us. Uh, What's up? These are for those who are here this morning. These are harder than they look. Yeah, those are, <laughs> those are plushies. It's almost like yeah, they're gonna throw them in the audience. Rock candy. Yeah. So when when we throw them in the audience later, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can just stare at yourself. It's you. It's me. Rather not. Uh, is that what I look like right now? We look ridiculous. I don't know. Ridiculously good. Howdy, y'all. Um, Bonjour. Bon, bon, bonjour. Um, what? Bonjour. 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 Whatever. Bonjour. <laughs> Listen, I say hello, you say hello. Hello? hello? That was the question. Hello? Uh, awesome to be back. My favorite um, is, is the okay. 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 Yeah. Not, okay. 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 It sounds like a question. Um, right. Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, uh, do you need to know where to go? Uh, no, I just, uh, I'm good. Okay. She's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. I swear to God, I know, it's down the hall to the left. It's gonna be fun. Okay. Is, is it? Is it? Is it in the UK where they say that's all right, or is it? Is that uh, Australia? Australia. That's it's right. Australia. Yeah. That one messes me up. That's all right. Because yeah, like, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. It's all right. I feel like I'm, I just put them out. <laughs> yeah. Because like, we say it's like that's all right. Like yeah. <laughs> they also do the they also do the good on you. You're like that one. I like. I like the. I like the good on you. Or no worries. Like that. That I can. But it also seems roll. like oh. You're like, yeah, we went this morning for a walk on the harbor. I was like patronizing. Like, oh, no, that's, that's good on you. That's like in the South, we've got bless your heart. <laughs> Which you can insult somebody as much as you want. And if you tie bless your heart on the end of it, it's okay. Be like, you're the dumbest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Bless your heart. <laughs> and then it's okay. And it's okay. Yeah, that's okay. All right, now that we've just made all the enemies in the room. I, so, for those who don't know, we, we flew in yesterday, got in yesterday, we had a pretty long layover, uh, we got delayed, and this was my favorite part of the morning. Uh, nice young lady came up and I was signing something, she said, you know, how, how are you? I said, I'm good. I'm good. I actually feel awake, but I don't look at it. She goes, oh, I know your face. I like, <laughs> so then I was trying to open my eyes really wide, and I like, swear to God, I'm like, until later, but yeah. But I love you too, wherever you are. You know who you are. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get some questions. We have some people waiting. Let's start right over here. Hello, boys. Hello. Um, my question is, on the set of Supernatural or any other set, did there ever be a moment where you had to overcome your greatest fear or one of the greatest fears to shoot a scene? Yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't have any scenes with bears. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, oh, Cliff. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Wherever Cliff he is, he's the closest thing to a bear I'm comfortable with. Um, comfortable adjacent. Um, but uh, you know what came to mind is one of the most nervous times on set of Supernatural that I've ever experienced was during uh, French Mistake, the, all the comedic stuff. I, I didn't feel comfortable doing comedy as Sam, so I would get really nervous when Sam had to be funny, because I was like, Sam's not really funny, like he's kind of just chill. You're not supposed to laugh at that guy. You're supposed to say, no, you're so funny. Uh, but I, I think I got really nervous shooting some of the comedic scenes in French Mistake. Otherwise, it was mostly pretty fun, even the stunt stuff. Yeah, I don't think there was ever a, a, a greatest fear moment uh, while filming. I mean, that you know, we're doing um, we're doing network television, which is is uh, pretty tame in the world of of TV, and 
they don't really write stuff that uh, I think would be too out of out of our comfort zone. Um, and after after a few seasons, they knew what our comfort zone was, and they kind of played in that and just utilized that. I was more com I was more uncomfortable doing stuff in the boys than I was. <laughs> um, that one was, you know, you that looked, got you looked comfortable. <laughs> It's called acting, dear boy. I was not comfortable. I was very nervous in a few of those scenes. Uh, so much so that I just called my mom and I was like, you're gonna want to skip this show. <laughs> not, you're not the target audience. Um, yeah, but that's, uh, but as far as Supernatural goes, no, they, they, they Have kind of- Have you ever told the story about, it, it never was shot, but about you finally calling Eric and being like, hey, I, I don't know about... Oh yeah, I told him. I, I told him there was, yeah. There was some, a, few, a few scenes that, uh, that I was asked to do that I was like, I didn't know I had a line, but you have found my line and I, I can't cross that line. Uh, I have children <laughs> that may grow up and see this. Um, yeah, there was, I think there was supposed to be a little bit more revealed when Soldier Boy was revealed for the first time. Uh, and then there was supposed to be a little bit more intimacy when Soldier Boy had his fun with the ladies. Um, that being said, it's, it still was... <laughs> I mean, I, I think I've told the story before, but the first day, my first day on set, very first day on set, was the day that they, uh, the capsule opens and, oh, yeah. and I step out. Um, and the very first scene that I've ever, that I ever did on the boys and on that it was me stepping out of the capsule um it, it, nice to meet you I'm yeah nice. in, front, in front of a brand new crew in front of an entirely new cast and like all of them too it wasn't just like a, a, a scene with like one it was like all of the boys and all of the crew and i was just like how you doing i'm jensen <laughs> and this is my buddy And I, I, I have some of the behind the scenes stuff and I'll post it later. No so. pun intended. <laughs> uh, I will say the most nervous I ever got on the set of Supernatural uh, for another person was the scene where Sam Winchester gets hit by a car. So it wasn't me, obviously. And also there's no way, like our stunts, even though some were, I don't wanna say dangerous, but they were intense, you know, we felt we're like, all right, we're young and fit, and we can take a hit, or we can do whatever. But when Mike Carpenter, who was my stuntman that day, got hit by a car, they basically, he had short hair, and so they put a bald cap on him, and then they put, uh, like, just a tiny, tiny, I wouldn't even call it a helmet. It was, like, almost, like, a thick liquid padding, uh, and then the Sam wig. Like a gel. Like a, like a, like like a, a gel pad. Gel. And that's all he had covering his skull, and then he has to get hit by a car, and there's no way to really control it. There's no way, like, okay, I'm gonna jump out this window, and I'm gonna spin once and land in pads. It's like, hey, you're getting hit by a car, like, try not to land on your head when you're flipping and flopping through the air. Uh, and so that happened, we watched it, and we were all like, is he gonna get up? And he got up. And uh, then the second time, he, like, his foot got caught on the bumper, and he got dragged, it was, it was, yeah, and then I think he went a third time, and then he got up, and stunt actors and actresses, they're usually like, I'm good, they'll have a broken bone that's obviously broken, and be like, we need to do it again, cool. Like, what? Uh, this time he got up, and he was like, I'm done, and so we all just kind of clapped, and um, yeah, that was the most nervous I, I got for somebody else. I had a, there's a, a um, go back to the boys real quick, there's a scene where I pick up uh, Carl Urban's character, Butcher, He's, he's like, I've knocked him down to the ground and I come up behind, I grab the, the back of his collar and he's face down. And I literally go up and over my body and slam him into a desk. And the stunt guy, obviously it wasn't Carl, but they, they wired up a stunt guy so that there was a wire. So, cause yeah. I'm supposed to be super, super strength, right? So one arm just flinging a human body. And they basically like, as I, as I did this, the wire got pulled but then at, at the apex, they just let the wire loose. And so I'm slamming him into as hard as I can. They're not feathering it down. 
and I, I remember the first time I did it, I was like, oh, this is going to feel so cool. And I went, ha! oh gosh, are you okay? And, and his name was Brian, he just popped right up and he's like, yeah, let's do it again. And I'm like, I don't want to. But we did it, we did it many times. And uh, the guy's a champ. So, that, but yeah, it was really, and then after I got used to it, that I just felt like a, <laughs> felt like a beast. Yeah, that was crazy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. First of all, I want to thank you for being here and for everything you're doing for everyone, always. Thank you. And my question is actually, since you're already talking about like really crazy things, what's the stupidest injury you ever got, like on any set? Wait, how much time you got? <laughs> Some. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've probably got a list of, I know we both have a list of, of these. I'll go with the first one that comes to mind, and it was, um, uh, it was Wendigo, I think, when I was pulling the gun out of the back of the Impala. Oh, yeah. Was that Hookman? Oh, it was Hookman, that's right. Uh, so very early on, but I was grabbing a, a, a long gun, I was grabbing a rifle, and I, I pulled it from the center of the, of the the gun and the, the butt of it caught the trunk edge and the barrel of the gun came up and hit me right square in the eye. So I did it to myself. But of course I was all Dean like and I was like <laughs> and it split me open. Um, that was pretty stupid. And self-inflicted too. So I no one to blame but me. I had one, and you're gonna know where I'm going with this. Uh, Leviathan, Sam and Dean in the bank. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is one of my favorite Jared Bonehead moves. <laughs> so we walk into the bank as Leviathan, Sam and Dean, and we're supposed to go and fire off some rounds, get everybody's attention. And I guess you know the frame ends here, and so we do what we do, and we lift our guns up and, and fire. But my gun was too high and they couldn't see it. And so I was like, we just need you to keep it lower. I was like, okay, fine. And so we do the next take. And instead of holding it up and going and shooting, I held it lower. And this gun that I was using, I'd never shot a gun like this before. It was a, it was a had, had it been a normal like gun that ejection, fired, yeah. you would have been fine. But yeah. this was so this weird. Was like up. It was like a weird Russian. Yeah. Like a little semi -auto or fully automatic machine gun. Yeah, and so we go do the next take, and so I hold it lower, and when we walk in, because I want to get the, the gun in the frame, I hold it low and start firing, and something is hurting. Like, I can immediately <laughs> feel something wrong. And so I stop, I'm like, okay, I, I, gotta, I, I think I gotta do something different. And I look over at Jensen, he's kind of looking at me, and I had, so as I was shooting, and the, the casings are ejecting, I had a line which is which is hot brass. Hot brass. I, it was like going, <laughs> and just across his face was like one, two, three, four. And like so they were just they were just hitting him in the face. But I just love that he just kept going. He's like, G -g 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 -ah! and he had like essentially like what? ash, like ash burn marks, and some were bleeding from where from the impact from the impact. So it was like hot brass, and then some, they were coming out pretty hot, oh, yeah. and coming out pretty fast. And so where there's just bone, like my giant forehead, it like <laughs> cut it, it cut my head. I was like, okay, well that, I'm not gonna do that again. That was dumb. That was dumb. Uh, so that was probably my dumbest. But thank God I- Again, we have a lot of those moments. Yeah. And it, it was happening so fast that if, I, if the gun had been just a little bit lower, it just would have gone right in my eyeball, you know? So that would have been very bad. Uh, nine lives on this one. Uh, thank you for your question. Hi there. Hi. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so if, if you were to attend a convention and meet people like we are doing this weekend, who would uh, a couple of your dream guests meet be? Oh, I see. If we were there. If you were us, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now choose yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you have another question? 
That's a great question. It's 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 similar to like if you could have dinner with somebody, who would it be? And I guess my initial response is like, are they going to be honest? You know, and like you. if I met with. Barack Obama, or if I met with you know some world leader, would they tell me the truth, you know, or would they just give me canned answers? Uh, I think I'd probably go mostly to musicians, just because like Eddie Vedder or something. Well, Jason, Billy, Gibby, Justin, all those musicians as well. Yeah, I think I think actors bore me by because <laughs> <laughs> I am one. Of them. Not you, not you. Not you, because I'm not an actor. <laughs> well, I find myself boring, uh, so I feel like the soundtrack to my life uh, is what I would kind of go to. Yeah, it's. it's I, I would say I'm, I instantly go to musicians as well, although they don't really do conventions like this per se. Um, it is definitely more of a, a an actor thing to do. Um, that being said, uh, I you know. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool to sit and hear what... I think Keanu Reeves is an interesting guy. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of who I would want to listen to answer questions and, and, and speak about uh, things involved in the industry. Um, I wouldn't mind sitting in on some of the Marvel. Um, you know, a, a Downey Jr. Um, and strictly for just kind of curiosity purposes, not like, oh my god, Iron Man, just, I, you said Iron Man? I just think he's, uh, I think he's an interesting fellow who has uh, lots of interesting things to say um, about topics that I could relate to. And yeah, so I, I, I would do it more for kind of curiosity purposes. Um, but yeah, there's, there's to name a couple. Love you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Love you back. Uh, we know you got a few new tattoos over the last two, three years. Would you like to talk us through? We'd be curious. <laughs> well, there's a new one I just got. Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, my pants are on too tight. Uh, uh, I've only, I, I think, I haven't gotten anything new in a while. I got this little thumb guy, which I, I think I've explained was, uh, I was with Jeffrey D. Morgan. We were at a friend's wedding in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Naturally. our wives were doing something with the bride and things and we had the afternoon free. So naturally, <laughs> as you do when you're with Jeff, uh, you go for beers and tattoos. Um, he got a few more than I did. I was, I limped in with just one, but, uh, that was uh, that was the story behind that. Um, yeah, you've gotten a few more than I have recently. Yeah, I have a few on the list that I haven't gotten yet. Uh, I think probably most recently. So we all know we got the basketball crown together with JDM uh, at his wedding, and then the day after Supernatural finished, which was September 11th, 2020, my buddy Bruce and I went to his tattoo artist in Vancouver, and I got this little. It's like a geometric design, it's just a bunch of lines. And I love when people ask me what it is, because they're like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's, it's an ancient Sumerian. I'm like, no kidding, what does it mean? And I'm like, uh, iPhone update. Uh, but, uh, so we just literally like, went to, it didn't mean anything. We just liked what it said, and, or liked, liked how it looked what it said. Uh, and then so I kind of did a little dot on him, he did a little dot on me. I have the star on my bicep, I have a come and take it kind of thing, which was really cool because I think a month later, Come and Take It became, at least in Texas, uh, became like a woman's rights kind of thing, like Come and Take My Rights, so it was kind of like, yeah, badass. Uh, and then I have a, um, uh, an homage to Dr. Seuss, Oh, the Places You'll Go, and mine is a little different. It's got T for Tom and A for Austin, which is Chef's name, and there's a little moon for Odette from one of my pay, uh, favorite passages in, uh, in Dr. Seuss. Um, but yeah, there's some more. Do you have some? Yeah, I, I got two. I got uh, this famous one, and I got one for my favorite band. Awesome. What's the famous one, and what's the band? <laughs> the, your AKF. Oh, man. Yeah. And this is uh, the band called AHA. It's an I know band. AHA. Yeah. yeah. So they're my favorite, and so I got an album artwork on my own. 
Very cool. I think he and I have both tried to hit the high note from Take On Me. Tried. Tried. <laughs> yeah. Failed. We both tried and failed. That's Thank awesome. you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Custom, custom events? Costume, costume events. events. Um, and I've heard um, Jensen and you talk about going to like, rent fairs with your family. Um, and I've seen Jensen cosplay as Batman and Red Hood. And I was wondering if you ever go to um, Comic Con or maybe a rent fair and you could dress up, maybe incognito like uh, Adam Savage does, what would you dress up as? I mean, I've already got the Red Hood and the Batman outfits, so I kind of feel like those are those would probably be uh, probably be my go-to. Um, besides those, hmm, Bullwinkle. <laughs> yeah, Rocky Bullwinkle. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we'd do well. Uh, Boba Fett. something with a mask. Just because I, I like the, the experience of, of being around people who are all passionate about stuff and, and not being flavored by like, aren't you that guy who was on Gilmore Girls? Uh, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, yeah. I'd go as the screen character because that just seems very comfortable. <laughs> I did. That's you know? right. That's right. <laughs> I, I did that one where I went and sat in the Apollo. That's awesome. right. <laughs> Um, who, who, who do you like to, uh, or is there a genre that you like the best? Um, well, I used to go to, like, Victorian events. Uh-huh. Um, like Victoria's Secret? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell us, you can keep it a secret. <laughs> keep it Victoria's Secret. No. Uh, no, like, uh, Victorian balls. Um, yes. Yeah, that's oh, that's a big secret. <laughs> Have you seen his Victorian? <laughs> we didn't sleep a lot. Uh, and Jared's back. <laughs> I told myself I wouldn't start this early, but...
15 years is, you know, kindergarten through college. And I saw this guy's face and I saw what he was going through more than any other human being on the planet and vice versa. He saw my face and what I was going through, my good times, my bad times, everything in between. And so you kind of get to really know the soul of somebody, not just who somebody is at their best. Like you go to a set anywhere and you'll probably enjoy most of the people, you know, for the first couple hours and they get tired or they have a bad day and they're an asshole or they're a jerk. Um, and I think for us, it was just like, hey, you're going, you are right? Like, what's up? Uh, and so I don't know. I, I think when you go through so much and you've seen somebody, it's like we've known each other since birth, um, but really we've known each other less than 20 years. And he's almost 60 next week. <laughs> so it's, uh, huh? <laughs> not hearing you. Um, yeah, we kind of we had a fast forward, you know, like into the fire. And we had just back, and I, I guess that's my best. I wish I knew. I think it's uh, there's also you know, supernatural was certainly the biggest thing that happened to he and I's career thus far, um, and arguably one of the biggest things that happened to our lives. Uh, it certainly has changed both our lives from when we uh, you know pre supernatural to now post, um, and to have some to have another person understand. The, the yeah the multitude of levels that that, that uh, on how that changed your life uh, to the degree that it which he and I know each other um, and I think it just kind of bonds you um, in in a way that's really indescribable um, you know I nobody understands what my life has been like for the past almost two decades more than he does. Um, because he was pretty much right there next to me the whole time. And he also was going through the same stuff, both personally and professionally, that I was going through. And so that really, that really bonds people together in a way that's, uh, um, that's, that's really indescribable. Um, so yeah, and it's, you know, it was a good thing we got along. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good thing we, you know, yeah. we laugh at the same jokes, we like the same kind of music, we cheer for the same sports teams, like it, there's just a lot in common, thank, thankfully. So that when when we were put in that uh, in that situation where we were going to be um, side by side for as long as we were, um, it was really easy and it was enjoyable. Yeah, and it's and I think in general, not just with working relationships or friendships, but with romantic relationships as well or family relationships, I think it's extremely important to be able to tell somebody uh, when something hurt you or bothered you and vice versa to listen when someone goes like hey this happened it felt you know off base or didn't feel cool and for that person to listen go like well shit that's not how i meant it or well that is how i meant it but this is why i said that so just to listen because if you if you're really good friends with anybody or close with anybody then you'll have disagreements and you'll go like well here's where i'm coming from help me understand where you're coming from and you'll listen and be like got it all right, let's let's move forward. So that's important, just with anybody you really care about. Just shoot them straight, you know. And, and thank you. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Um, we appreciate it. Um, my question was regarding acting. Um, a big part of acting is dealing with rejection, and I wondered how both of you deal with. Um, keeping motivation in trying to act when we're doing the projection? Well said, uh, great question. Um, it reminds me of a story, when I was on, I think it was when I was still on Good More Girls, and I was auditioning, whatever, half a dozen times a week for other projects. Uh, I bought a house in the Valley in Los Angeles, and a friend of my then girlfriend came over, we were having like a house party or whatever, and I'm gonna order pizza, and, whatever, um, and was showing her around, and by my bed in the bedroom, I had a stack of like 12 scripts, or maybe even more, 15 scripts, all stuff that I was reading, hoping to get an audition for, or whatever, and she looked over, and she's very famous, right, or she's very successful now in her own right, her name's Angela Johnson, she's a comedian, and she's awesome, but she looked at my stack of scripts, and she's like, oh my god, are those all the auditions you've been on? And I was like, <laughs> follow me 
and I walked her down to the garage where I had like find like the cardboard f boxes full of scripts. I probably had three or four hundred scripts that I auditioned for at some point in time in the prior three or four years. And I was like, those are all the auditions I've been on. And she just, like her mouth went agape. And I think the way I deal with rejection now is to treat auditions or meetings as maybe that's my performance. Maybe this is my chance to play this character. So I'm just gonna go do the character. And also, he and I both now, uh, having been on the producing side, you realize how silly casting sometimes gets. You know, there will be five people that will all do an amazing job, but they're gonna be acting with a brunette, so we don't want them to look too similar, so we're gonna go with the blonde, or vice versa. Or, oh, uh, she's 5'11", and that's, too tall to play a 14 year old because she's acting somebody who's 5'3 and it'll look, so it's, it comes down to these random ass, like, you know, any one of these five or 10 people would be amazing, do an amazing job. What's, okay, well, uh, this person said this one line in a way that we like, even though this person said the other line in a way that we like more. So it, it gets so silly, so that's helped a little bit, is seeing like the, the, the vagaries of, um, uh, casting uh, and the subtle nuances that don't even really make sense. And so I try and just go like, all right, well, I'll do my best. And if that's the last time I get to play that character, then so be it. I also think that as you, as you get older, the, your, your way of dealing with rejection changes. Um, you know, Jared and I, we, we've, had, we've had really great success so far in our, in our lives and in our career. And so when, when there's rejection now, I think he and I can both stand firm on the fact that we've been validated by a, a multitude of people and our career reflects that. So that if, if somebody says, no, we don't want you to that role, or no, we don't like that, that idea for a show that you're pitching, we can be like, okay, maybe it's not the right time, maybe they just don't see that vision, maybe they're, they're looking for something else, maybe they want somebody that's uh, not so oddly tall, uh, <laughs> like or oddly bow-legged, like a normal size. <laughs> um, and so it's, uh, and also knowing what we know, like Jared said, about being on the other side of it, um, it has really opened the curtain, it's kind of drawn the curtain back and see um, how, uh, a lot of times, how ridiculous the, 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 this, this process can be in getting to that final stage. But um, so I think we deal with it a little bit differently now. Early on, when we didn't have that, uh, that affirmation to kind of rely on, it was, um, it was just thick skin. You just had to develop thick skin. If somebody says, you're not good enough, then you just know, you just gotta know in your heart that, you know what, I am good enough, and you just didn't see it. to say that um, thank you so much for everything that I will be forever grateful for everything what you've done and what you keep going doing. And um, my question is, uh, Jared, what does uh, Dean mean to you? And Jensen, what does Sam mean to you? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you back. Uh, I think for me now, a couple years out, you know, it's been two and a half years since we shot our final scene, roughly. Yes, it's because this question was prepared a long time ago. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I wasn't saying, I was trying to say. Pay attention, Jared, all right? This is Jib 12, okay. Okay. not 47. Yeah. 11. 11, like 12, I said. 12 was last year, this is 11. Whatever. I wasn't trying to say it was a shitty question, I'm saying I have more <laughs> hindsight now. Like I, I would rather answer this question now than two years ago or three years ago. Um, so where I stand now, you know, I'm a, I'm a 40 year old man with a wife and three kids oh. and some this party. No, uh, it's, it's difficult for me to try and see to try and differentiate between what Dean meant and what Jensen meant, all I can say is that I learned a lot from both, and a lot of the reason I'm the man I am and the actor I am 
is because, coming back to my other question, I spent you know 15 years looking at this guy and then they're calling action and I was looking at Dean. And so, you know, it's hard to kind of really parse out exactly what I got. I got my dad voice from Dean. Thomas! Um, Me too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I learned every step of the way. I didn't think it was really exciting. Um, I think I'm, a lot of, a lot of what I really liked about Dean was his keep going attitude, and that's very similar to Jensen. I'm like, yeah, this sucks, but, but we gotta get through it. You know, kind of like, all right, we're tired. It's 16 hours in, it's four in the morning, it's fucking raining or freezing in Vancouver, and we have to go to a fight scene and lay in the snow, but all right, it ain't gonna do itself. Like, let's go do it. So uh, that kind of awoke something in me, for sure. Um. Yeah, I, I, I mean, to echo basically everything that, that Jared just said, um, but also, you know, I, I know that, that Sam is a, a part of Jared. I know that that, that is, that Sam resides in, in Jared's personality as well, and so getting to see um, as many times as I did, Jared bring that element of himself forward and then take on the embodiment of Sam um, was, was like getting to see um, getting to see a, a, a specific micro aspect of of Jared and, and how he can mold that and play with that and tell a story using that. Um, and I just always thought that he was very just gifted in doing so. Um, and now he's doing it with another character and he's also, I mean, I, I, I think he and I, because we weren't classically trained as, as actors and we didn't, we didn't have any formal training to speak of at all, um, we had to learn to use what we knew, and that's essentially ourselves. And so, you know, Dean is certainly a, a part of my personality um, that is exaggerated. Sam is also a part of Jared's personality that is exaggerated. And so, we got to we got to play these kind of exaggerated versions of ourselves with each other, and then they yell cut, and then we get to go back to being ourselves. And so, I really feel like it's it, it's just part of the package that I got with my friend Jared. Um, and I'll, I'll forever uh, be grateful of that, and I, I look forward to the next time I get to see him morph into Sam. Thank you. Is that it? Uh, no more questions? No more questions for now. No more questions for now. We're, we're flying, we're taking off, we're leaving, <laughs> we're going to the airport? There are Victorian balls backstage. Just kidding. We're going to be here for the rest of the week, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for being here.